Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4 is a game that thrusts a number of choices upon the sole survivor. Some big, others small, but most of the significant ones come with some level of moral ambiguity, with no clearly defined right or wrong answer. However, every now and again, we don't feel like being Mr. Goody Two Shoes, and instead want to be the bad guy for a change. Thankfully, Fallout 4 does offer a handful of opportunities to rear our evil sides, if you will. So today we'll be taking a look at 5 more evil things you can do and may have missed in Fallout 4. Starting off, Travis is the very soft-spoken DJ and host of Diamond City Radio. Anyone who's listened to the station for more than a couple of songs can easily tell that Travis isn't exactly the most confident person out there. Hey, this, uh, um, this is Travis Miles. Not on the record. I mean, me, me. I'm, tra man, I'm Travis Miles. I'm playing. Mm. You're listening to Diamond City Radio. He talks almost in a whisper and seems to have next to no self esteem at all. During the quest, Confidence Man, the sole survivor and the owners of one of Diamond City's pubs work together to try and get Travis out of such a slump and build him a spine. Ultimately, your efforts will be successful, and after helping him win a fight, talk to a girl, and a few other things, he'll have a new sense of purpose, which will quickly show off in his more outspoken DJing. But perhaps you're not in the mood to go through all this work. You're a legendary vault dweller destined to save the commonwealth. Not some therapist, and certainly not one who works for free. Well, if this is the case, and if you still don't want to hear him weep all day, rather than go through that entire story arc, before beginning the quest, Travis will be flagged as non-essential, meaning you can simply walk up to the guy and murder him to death in cold blood fairly easily. He, unsurprisingly, won't put up much of a fight, though if you're not careful, you'll elicit a likely unwelcome response from the town security forces. Killing Travis will result in some interesting game changes that'll start to occur shortly after his demise. Most significantly, Shane Kowalski, a young orphaned boy living on his own who normally sells water bottles, will take over as Diamond City Radio's new host, offering an assortment of otherwise unavailable commentary you can hear whenever you decide to listen. Furthermore, residents of the city will occasionally mention Travis's unfortunate and untimely passing. Hey, so, uh, that Travis guy is dead? This is Shane Kowalski, uh, seller of fine water products, and I guess I'll play the music from now on. If you're looking for music, you're in the right place. If you're looking for quality bottled water, come see Shane Kowalski. So, if you're looking for the Commonwealth's favorite radio station to have a DJ with some confidence, and aren't interested in going through an entire quest, be aware of this potential option. Next on our list, we head out to the wonderful amusement park that is Nuka World USA, happiest place on earth. Here, upon our first visit near Fizz Top Grill, we can encounter a woman named Sierra Petrovita. We talked a bit about her before in our last Fallout-related video. Anyway, she claims to be Nuka-Cola's biggest fan on Earth, and lives for that brand. She'll offer you the quest, Cappy in a Haystack, which sends the player to locate a number of strange hidden bottle cap mascot paintings across the park. Each of these pictures has a letter in it, and Sierra believes that when all of the pictures and letters have been found, they will spell out the passcode to the office of Mr. John Caleb Bradburton founder of the Nuka-Cola company, and inside that office, Sierra suspects the long-lost recipe to Nuka-Cola can be found somewhere. And so begins perhaps one of the most frustrating easter egg hunts that you'll ever embark on. But once you've found all the secret mascots, which again, I can't stress enough is a gigantic pain in the neck, you can return to Sierra. And surprisingly enough, the two of you will indeed be able to enter Brad Burton's office. And inside here, you'll find something much more noteworthy than just some old dusty recipe as underneath the building will be an entire hidden away vault, likely untouched for centuries. And inside that vault will be none other than John Caleb Bradburton, the Nuka-Cola founder and CEO himself. Or at least part of him. His head lies, or maybe floats, in a frozen container, but he's completely alive and sentient. He's been like this since the bombs fell. When spoken to, Mr. Brad Burton will be ecstatic to finally see somebody, and will explain that before the war, when he still had his body, he agreed to sell the United States military weapon schematics in exchange for them providing him what they called life-extending technology. He just wasn't prepared for this. 
Long story short, he's been in this condition, motionless, cold and alone for hundreds of years. After explaining this miserable condition, the Nuka-Cola founder will ask one simple favor of the sole survivor. Cut the power to the system keeping him alive. He wants to die. If you do this, he promises that cutting the power will also give you access to a safe with some of the weapons that he loaned the military, as well as the Nuka-Cola original recipe. All of that can be yours. Sierra, however, she, well, has another idea. She wants you to keep him alive against his wishes so she can spend years with him, and maybe even try and take him back home with her. Brad Burton, obviously, is very not okay with that crazy plan, and begs you to just end his life. Though Sierra promises to give you a unique jumpsuit if you agree to her request. Now, this suit is worth a lot less than what Brad Burton is promising. But, at this point, if you so please, you can condemn the poor head to many more years of torment for the simple suit anyway. The game approaches the whole thing somewhat lightheartedly, but don't let the gravity of this choice be lost on you. Likewise, if you want to take this whole thing a step further, you could play both sides. Promise to keep Caleb alive and get Sierra to hand over her suit, only to kill him immediately afterwards and also gain access to his safe too. This, however, will cause Sierra to turn very hostile. Whatever you end up doing, just make sure you keep a smile on your face. You are in the happiest place on Earth. Coming at number 3, during Fallout 4's main quest line, in the earlier stages as you attempt to locate the Institute, your search will eventually lead you to a very strange man named Virgil, hiding out in a cave in the glowing sea. You see, Virgil, by the time we meet him, is a super mutant. Kind of. Through our conversations with him and other characters, we learn that Virgil was once a completely normal human, a member of the Institute and high-ranking scientist in the Bioscience FEV division. Over time, he grew increasingly disillusioned with the experiments the organization was performing, and felt his work to be highly unethical. Eventually, Virgil couldn't stomach it anymore, and one day destroyed much of the Institute's bio-research before injecting himself with a modified FEV virus and fleeing into the wastes. As Virgil entered the Commonwealth, the virus granted him immunity to radiation, allowing him to hide out in the glowing sea, safe from any Institute operatives seeking retribution, but also had the unfortunate effect of turning his physical appearance into that of a super mutant. He retains his intellectual faculty, keeping his mind intact, but his body just wasn't so lucky. Virgil agrees to help the player get inside the Institute, but has one major request. Within their underground fortress, before he left, Virgil left behind a serum capable of curing his condition. He wants you to get that serum and bring it back to him, so the man can finally go back to normal again. He also prefers that you don't harm any of the people in the Institute, but that's neither here nor there. After you've gotten inside the Institute, you'll be able to locate the cure, though it does require going a bit out of your way. Once you've found it, you may bring it back to Virgil, who will inject the cure, and remarkably, just a few days later, return to normal. Alas, maybe you're not feeling so helpful. Maybe for whatever reason, you don't want to help out poor Virgil. If that's the case, you have a wealth of evil alternatives. For one, you can just ignore the serum in general, just don't get it for him, and when you return to his camp, if at all, you can just lie and say you couldn't find the serum, or just tell him that you couldn't have been bothered to look for it, which may provoke the man to turn hostile. We had a deal! I help you get into the Institute! You get me the serum! Rawr! Option B, even if you did get the cure and tell him that you have it, you can still choose not to hand it over. This will obviously make him very livid and cause him to turn hostile. Or, regardless of whether or not you got the serum, you can tell Virgil you couldn't find it, and proceed to pass a few speech checks to convince him to kill himself. It's pretty horrible. I can't find it anywhere. I'm sorry. What am I gonna do? Am I stuck like this? What about the virus? Won't your condition get worse over time? I... I don't know. God, what if you're right? Could I end up like those dumb brutes? No. No, I couldn't live like that. Then end it now, while you can still make that choice. 
For Fort Spot, the Far Harbor DLC centers around a conflict between a settlement of humans living on the island's northern shores, an enclave of runaway synths held up in an observatory, and a chapter of the Children of Adam cult, who have made their home in the ruins of an old, pre-war nuclear submarine base. Ultimately, you are given a lot of say in how this situation unravels. You can ensure a peaceful situation is achieved where all live in harmony, or see to it that all of the factions are destroyed, and everything in between. That said, one particularly cruel option available at your disposal is to betray the synths in the observatory in an especially cruel way. You see, these synths call their settlement Acadia, and they strive to simply survive and avoid conflict with the outside world as much as possible. While at times some of their methods may seem a bit odd or misplaced, it's obvious no one here means any actual harm. Their leader, Dima, is extremely polite, trusting, and welcoming to the player. Again, all they want to do is live freely, away from the clutches of humans who wish to persecute them and institute scientists who seek to recapture and repurpose them. Well, if you're already a member of the Institute of high enough rank, soon after your introduction to these renegade synths and you've gained their trust, you can simply head back to the Commonwealth and tell the rest of the Institute about them. This will prompt the scientists to dispatch a strike team from their Synth Retention Bureau to attack Dima's Enclave alongside you and ultimately subdue all the runaway Synths before teleporting them back to their compound to have their memories wiped and be reprogrammed. Any nonsense here will be killed. This is a really gruesome fate, as something the Acadian Synths stress is that their worst fear is being recaptured by the SRB. They see it as slavery, and many openly state their preference to death. Furthermore, if the player is in the good graces of the Brotherhood of Steel, you can call upon them to send a team to Acadia and clear it out. Though rather than subdue and recapture the synths, they'll just destroy them. In any case, either of these options will greatly derail the Far Harbor storyline, and any chances for peace between the remaining human settlement and the Children of Adam will be removed. So. Weigh those choices carefully. And finally, last on our list, speaking of Far Harbor, lying on a bed in the town's bait shop is a sick man by the name of Andre. The local doctor will inform the player that Andre spent a bit too much time in the fog, and his body just couldn't seem to cope with it. Now, he's on the brink of death. If the sole survivor has high enough intelligence, the medic perk leveled up to two, or Lorenzo Cabot's mysterious serum, any one of these three will do, you can quite easily cure the man and restore him to life, or good health. This will result in many things, including him and the doctor thanking you profusely, Andre going on to walk around and become a normal citizen of Far Harbor, and him later on speaking on the player's behalf and backing you in wherever you decide to lead the settlement. That all said, maybe you don't want to play doctor. If for whatever reason you decide that helping Andre just isn't worth your time, later in the game he'll despawn, and dialogue you can overhear with the harbor's residents will reveal that he passed away due to a lack of treatment. The doctor will further confirm Andre's passing. Your inaction led to the poor man's demise. Alternatively, if you just sort of ignore him in general, it's possible he'll remain on the bed indefinitely. But as soon as you have the conversation that reveals his sickness, if you don't take action, he will pass away. So make sure you act quickly. Or don't. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more evil choices you may have missed in Fallout 4. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Which of the options we discussed today did you find to be the cool- Actually, never mind, that comes off as a bit weird. Instead, what have your favorite Fallout 4 choices been? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for coming, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.